you know, we, should, we end the book, uh, this book, we end um, with uh, the current situation on the world, and we, this was even before the last November 8th, when we have come to realize it can even be rather grim here in America. Uh, but uh, this, this sort of the final moment here where his oracle is telling him like this, all these difficulties that are happening around him, and the picture for Tibet is still very, very rough, and we show the, uh, about here I think we have, when we finished this page, was around 146 young Tibetans who have given their bodies to flames as a way of uh, showing their, that, you know, it's just not worth this kind of conflict, and they're going to move on to a new body, you know. And um, so this is a very rough scene, but then we have an epilogue where we show his vision, and he's still confident that things will work out for the planet, and he has these four sources of hope that he outlines here, which he used to say even before the current grim things that have been going on, he used to say were a comparison between 1900 and 2000. That's why That's he right. said that the 21st century would be a century of peace, because it's no longer practical, all of the, the forces that made the 20th century such a violent, bloody century. The world religions, including taking secularism as a kind of, you know, secular humanism as a kind of religion, uh, getting together and not causing any conflict and violence. He has the second vision. And then Tibet being a healing center like the Switzerland of Asia within a world system that has changed where people have recognized that war is no longer viable. It doesn't work. And also young people have finally got the petroleum industry to take a break and they're all driving cheaper Teslas. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we're managing all the solar power thing. It's actually already huge, actually, right. although we, we're led to believe it isn't, but it's actually already more, more solar power than oil, actually, more kilowatts right now. If you add in the natural gas, unfortunately, the petroleum people are still doing more energy production in the U.S., you know, but otherwise the solar has gone really big. I was talking, people have not noticed. I was talking to a guy yesterday who's uh, part of a group who's designing solar units for mm -hmm. Africa, where there's no uh, understru you know, infrastructure. Right. They don't have electric. So uh, they, you can have a panel on your hut, and the light will give you a light, and right. it, it'll power your computer, and you don't need to be on the grid. This is like hopscotching. That's great. It's just a nice yeah, yeah. thing for future. Yeah. And also something that I want to get, maybe you'll get one, and maybe you all get one. <laughs> Apparently, they designed a, a wind power unit, which isn't a giant blade. It's a small box that, because the design, cleverly makes a wind tunnel. So a oh. five mile an hour wind can power this and power your house. Oh, that's this really is just cool. to say that yeah, his yeah, visionary, tube things. Yeah. yeah, the technology, uh, advances in technology are making this happen. There is a saying, the future's already here, it's just not evenly distributed. Uh, that's right. That's very good. Just very good.